a SARS-2 CoV virus, the infective viral antigen RDRP disrupts and blocks in reducing the viral load. Now, what are the drawbacks of this study? An open label study, putting all this into perspective, I think we are in a better place. This episode, we are going to be talking about favipiravir, a drug which has been in the news recently for its role in the treatment of mild to moderate cases of COVID-19. We explore five interesting things about the drug. One, what is favipiravir and what is its history? Two, how it actually works in inhibiting the SARS-CoV-2 virus? Three, we will take a look at two studies. The first done in China, studying the effects of favipiravir on human subjects and a second study released in May, which studied the effects of SARS-2-CoV in the lab. Four, what are the drawbacks, if any? And five, the impact the drug will have on our COVID-19 response. I am Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic surgeon from the city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. I am doing this video because I think valid information gives you more reasons not to fear. So let's get into it. Favipiravir is an antiviral drug that has been approved for the treatment of H1N1 influenza in Japan since 2014. The government of Japan controls the production and dispensing of all these drugs, which means private pharmacies cannot sell these drugs. Doctors all over the world suggest a little bit of caution. It is not a game changer or a magic bullet which will completely treat COVID-19. It shows improvement in around 30% of the cases. In order to be effective, will have to be used with other drugs also, like drugs which reduce inflammation or reduce viral load using other techniques. And that this doesn't mean that wearing a mask physical distancing, isolating when sick, and hand hygiene are not important. Those are the basic pillars of protecting ourselves against the COVID-19. Now, how does favipiravir work? Imagine a SARS-2 CoV virus finds its way into a lung. There, it approaches the alveoli. The alveoli is the smallest unit of the lung where the ARDS or the actual pathology in COVID-19 occurs. Once it comes close to the alveoli, it searches for an empty ACE receptor. Point to know, if your vitamin D in blood is high, then the ACE receptors on the alveoli will already be full of vitamin D and the SARS-CoV-2 cannot enter your cell. But just in case the vitamin D is low and the SARS-CoV-2 SARS-2 CoV manages to attach itself onto the ACE2 receptors. What happens is it introduces the infective viral antigen or viral RNA into the host human respiratory cell. The viral antigen goes into the nucleus and convinces the human RNA to start producing replicas of infective viral antigen. And this conversion of the human RNA to viral antigen is done by this enzyme RDRP or RNA dependent RNA polymerase. And favipiravir disrupts and blocks the functioning of the RDRP thus reducing the production of ineffective viral antigens and helping in reducing the viral load. I know it's confusing, but all you have to remember is RDRP is essential for the viral replication inside the human cell and favipiravir blocks this function. Now let's get to the studies. The human study involving 80 subjects was done in China. This was an open label study, which means that both the doctor and the patient knew what drug they were getting. This study divided 80 patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 into two groups of 35 and 45. The group of 35 were given favipiravir and they found out that there was a 30% reduction of symptoms, viral load and CT scan findings. Now, what are the drawbacks of this study? One, it is just involving Asian subjects. Second, the number is just 80. Third, the fact that it being an open label study, we have to take the findings of the study with a little bit of salt. Now, the second study. On the second study, they grew the SARS-CoV-2 virus in a Petri dish in the lab and they checked the effects of the drug on it and found out that favipiravir was able to cause mutations in the viral RNA, making it less infective. Japan and Russia have already approved favipiravir as treatment for mild and moderate cases. Overall, we know now that 
favipiravir affects SARS-2 CoV virus under laboratory conditions. It improves symptoms and CT scan findings in patients, not to mention that it is an inexpensive and an oral drug. So it could be a good weapon in our arsenal against the COVID-19. But what are the negatives? There are not enough international articles to prove its efficacy and the US FDA has still not approved it. But anyway, as its efficacy and safety has been proved against the influenza, I think this is good news. Now let's get some perspective about where exactly do we stand with favipiravir in today's world. We know that good levels of vitamin D protect you against infection from SARS-CoV-2 and also reduce the progress to severe infection. Two, we know that dexamethasone reduces mortality by 20 to 25 percent in severe cases. Now, we have somewhat of a solution for the mild and moderate cases to not progress to severity. Putting all this into perspective, I think we are in a better place. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to my channel so that you can get such regular updates. See you soon guys. Bye bye.